Do. Here we are. This is Context is Everything Media Network. This is What's Under Your Hood, Episode 7. And just to start out, here we have a history textbook. Not any history textbook. A well-maintained, pro pro properly uh, illustrated upon textbook from the year. Published 2001. An important year in the state of our union. Um, but this book is from before that important event that occurred in 2001 that affected everything. Now, is that why I'm reading this? No. But is it an interesting subplot to me reading this? Sure. I'm going to keep an eye out on how things have uh, changed in the way uh, history is portrayed. I was a history teacher in schools for four years. And uh, so I've read newer ones. And so I can kind of hear the tone and how things have shifted. But that's not really why I'm reading this. This is just part of my intrigue. And part of what makes it interesting for me. So that I can read with some sort of passion for the camera here. If I'm looking this way, that means I'm looking at you. Well, if I'm looking over here, I'm just strictly looking at myself. Because I'm very self-involved. And, um, yeah. Something I, don't, I do not understand, let me tell you. So I notice I'm wearing a shirt that's kind of the same color as my skin, pretty close. I don't get this phenomenon that's going on these days and help illuminate me for where I'm off. What's this thing about dyeing, dyeing the eyebrows like skin color? I don't like that. Like not just on an aesthetic level, it seems like it's bad seems like it's a bad idea you know on an aesthetic level yeah it's completely unappealing and maybe that's the point I'm sure it's appealing to some but I mean just on a like if you're talking about you know the symmetry of the face is a, a look of beauty right and you split the face and you see what's the percentage that this side is the same as this side like that's the metric for a beautiful face I'm, I'm certain that not having eyebrows or the illusion of not having eyebrows is on those sort of metrics statistics for beauty yeah i'm, I'm not saying i'm i'm in alignment with the majority here i'm saying that the the symmetry thing is probably um i agree with it this is going too far i don't get the eyebrow thing wholly don't get it but i'm wearing a shirt that's kind of like the same idea that's what i'm saying that's all i'm saying for god's sake <laughs> What's a guy got to do to just get his point across here? And people biting my head off already. Leave in the comments below if you take issue with what I said. If you agree, I don't want to hear about it. If you agree, I don't want to hear a word. We're back here in Sumer. We had a homework question. And that was, describe how two Sumerians accomplished... Describe how two Sumerian accomplishments influenced later people. Two Sumerian accomplishments. One of them would be... They started cuneiform, right? Let me just verify. Because if they started cuneiform... <coughs> sorry, that's disgusting. It's disgusting, I'm sorry. I didn't... I don't remember... I'm getting used to the whole, like, talking in front of a camera thing. Um, I wouldn't have done that in the classroom. I would not have, like, burped out loud. I would have stifled it with a, one of those, you know? I wouldn't have got, uh, I would have done. See what I'm saying? Too much, too much exposition here. We got to get back to the topic at hand. We're looking for... <laughs> Jeez. Well, that's all right. Cuneiform, cuneiform, cuneiform. I want to see, in this book, looking for blue letters, I want to see, is cuneiform? There it is. Um, okay, the Sumerians had invented what may have been the earliest known form of writing. Okay, so... I'm basing my understanding off of this because I haven't heard anything about earlier forms of writing. 
Um, there may have been. I don't know about them. In 2001, we didn't know about them, at least on a mass uh, public scale. 2001 textbook says, cuneiform earliest known language. May have been. So I'm going to go off of that assess, uh, assumption. Describe two Sumerian accomplishments that influenced later people. Invention of written language. <clears throat> if not the first, an early adopter. Um, that's important because language in written form can preserve brain of individuals. Individuals with good brain that can think well for others and to help others can write down their thoughts and that affects the future. The question is, describe how Sumerians' accomplishments influenced later people. They could write down their thoughts and help other people, literally influencing them by their thought. Great color green, isn't this? I really like it. I think it was like $28 at Kohl's after like a Amazon Prime $5 return coupon. A couple percent off, too, on top of it. Good savings. Eddie Bauer, good brand. Too much. Let's get back to it. Describe how two Sumerian accomplishments influenced later people. Language, written, cuneiform. I don't remember the other one. Put it in the comments below. What's the other one? Language is definitely one of them. Invaders, section four of ancient Sumer. Invaders, traders, and empire builders. Empire building, one of the classic um, cross-country train lines on the USA Amtrak um, docket. I believe Ca uh, Chicago, Illinois, to uh, Seattle, Washington. The empire builder, empire building. Might have made that up. It might be true. Look it up. Leave in the comments below if that's true or if that's false. Empire building, uh, train line, Amtrak, Chicago to Seattle. If that's true, let me know. If it's false, uh, please express your disdain down below. <clears throat> Haven't started the chapter by you, by the way. Seven minutes, 47 seconds in, uh, dilly-dallying. Leave in the comments below, what do you think about the dilly-dallying? Is it a worthwhile venture or should I just get to the book? Leave in the comments below if you think I should continue to dilly-dally or I should just get to the book because I'm on page 38 of 1007. And the goal is to finish this this year through posting this every day. Does every day mean five days a week or seven days a week? I don't know. We're six days into the year. Today's January 6th, which I suppose is a day that will live on in infamy two years ago. Is it going to be like a holiday, like 9-11? Well, if we had a newer textbook, maybe we'd know. But we don't. We have a textbook from 2001. They don't even know about the September 11th attacks yet. This was published for the school year directly anticipating it. That would have started probably the week of those attacks. Now, let's get back to it, because we're here talking about ancient Sumer. What's my problem? Just get to it. Invaders, traders, and empire builders. That's right, I was talking about the train. If you had visited the palace of ancient Assyrian king Asurbanipal, Asurbanunpal, you would have found the walls decorated with magnificent carvings. One scene shows Asurbanipal as the his queen enjoying and his queen enjoying a picnic in their lush palace garden. Nearby musicians entertain the royal couple. The scene is relaxing and elegant. Look carefully, though. You will see something startling. Hanging from a tree branch just behind the harp player is the head of a defeated king. Huh. 
In the ancient Middle East, as elsewhere, bloody warfare and advanced culture often went hand in hand. In this section, we will look at the accomplishments of a series of Middle Eastern civilizations across 3,000 years of war and peace. Well, we're moving on past Sumer, further Middle East. Ruling a large empire, invasion and conquest were prominent features in the history of the ancient Middle East. Again and again, nomadic peoples or ambitious warriors descended on the rich cities of the Fertile Crescent. While many invaders simply looted and burned, some stayed to rule. Powerful leaders created large, well-organized empires, bringing peace and prosperity to the region. The first empire builder, that's a section, the first empire builder, I should probably bring my head up a little bit, talk more to the microphone, right? Good form, probably good posture as well. I should sit up like this. No, better. About 2300 BC, Sargon, the ruler of neighboring Akkad, no H, invaded, conquered, invaded and conquered the city-state of Sumer. He built the first empire known to history. His astonishing achievements did not last long, however. Soon after his death, other invaders swept into the wide valley between the rivers, tumbling his empire into ruin. In time, Sumerian city-state revived and their power struggle resumed. Eventually, however, new uh, conquerors followed in the footsteps of Sargon and imposed unity over the Fertile Crescent. I don't know what that means. I'm not a great reader. Not a great reader, by the way. You've heard this. You understand. Hammurabi, the lawgiver. Hammurabi's code. I've heard of that. In about 1790 BC, Hammurabi, king of Babylon, brought much of Mesopotamia under his control. He took steps to unite the Babylonian Empire. His most ambitious and lasting contribution was his publication of a remarkable set of laws known as the Code of Hammurabi. Hammurabi was not the author of the Code. Most of the laws had been around since Sumerian times. Hammurabi, however, wanted everyone in his empire to know the legal principles his government would follow. He had artisans carve nearly 3,000 laws on a stone pillar for all to see. On it, what? Look at this. Check this out. It says over here, he had artisans carve nearly 300 laws on stone pillar for all to see. I know you can't read the letters, but see what I'm saying. On it, he... And it just skips to this assessment page. This assessment page starts a new paragraph, but this is the beginning of a sentence in the middle of a paragraph. This is a, just a completely different page. Page 38, page 39, it says it right there, and it says it right there. So these are consecutive pages, but they just... Ended a sentence, mid-sentence. For what? Why would you do that? 2001, these cavemen. These cavemen. They don't even know how to organize papers in key sequence. They cut a paragraph off halfway through. Am I supposed to turn a page and turn it back to read one sentence? What, are you out of your mind? On it, he proclaimed that his goals were to cause justice to prevail in the land to destroy the wicked and evil, that the strong may... Uh, let me try that again. On it, he proclaimed his goals were 
to cause justice to prevail in the land, to destroy the wicked and evil, that the strong may not oppress the weak. Hammurabi's code was first important uh, was the first important attempt by a ruler to codify or arrange and set down in writing all the laws that the government would use. Crime and punishment. Punishment and crime. One section of Hammurabi's code codified criminal law. This branch of law deals with offenses against each other such as robbery, assault, or murder. Earlier traditions often permitted victims of crimes or their families to take the law into their own hands. By setting out specific punishments for specific offenses, Hammurabi's Code limited personal vengeance and encouraged social order. Limited personal vengeance and encouraged social order. That is a nice set of words, I'm going to tell you. That's a nice sentence. That is a nice sentence. By today's standards, the punishments of Hammurabi's code often seem cruel, following the principle of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a life. A life for a life. For example, if a house collapsed because of poor construction, the homeowner was killed. Oh, and the home. <laughs> That's not what it said. <clears throat> not a great reader. Haven't been for a long time. Um, where was I? For example, if a house burnt down and was poorly constructed. Let me try that again. One more time. Really unproductive lesson here today. Page and a half, a lot of dilly-dallying, a lot of exposition of me just talking about other things. Leave in the comments below if you think... I should continue to do exposition, or should I just read the darn book? What's Under Your Hood? Episode 7. This is Context is Everything Media Network, and we're very happy to have you along. I think I'm going to make this the thumbnail, looking directly at the camera. I'll just take a screenshot of that. Um, So I'm talking about the codified laws. Let's get back to it. By today's standards, the punishment for Hammurabi's code often seemed cruel, following the principle of an eye for an eye and a life for a life. For example, if a house collapsed because of poor construction and the homeowner was killed, the builder of the house could be put to death, murdered by the government. Still, such a legal code was more orderly than unrestricted personal vengeance. I could see that. Civil law. Another part of Hammurabi's code uh, involved civil law. This branch of law deals with, privilege, uh, with private rights and matters such as business contracts, property enhance, uh, inheritance, taxes, marriage, and divorce. Yada, 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 yada. Other accomplishments, although most famous for his law code, Hammurabi took other steps to unite his empire. He improved irrigation, organized a well-trained army, and had temples re uh, repaired. To encourage religious unity across his empire, he prompted the chief of Babylon god, Murdach, promoted the chief Babylonian god, Murdach, over all Sumerian gods. Okay, warfare and the spread of ideas, the secret to ironworking, Assyrian warriors, war changes, 
uh, culture, yada, yada, yada. Conquerors have culture. They conquer people with culture. They melting pot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Secrets of iron working. Asia Minor, Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia had learned to extract iron from ore. The Hittites heated iron ore and pounded out impurities before plunging it into cold water. The tools and weapons they made with iron were harder and with sharp edges than those made with bronze or copper. Because iron was plentiful, the Hittites were able to arm more people at less expense. The Hittites tried to keep this valuable technology secret, but as their empire collapsed in about 1200 BC, the Hittites' ironsmiths migrated to serve customers elsewhere. The new knowledge thus spread across Asia, Africa, and Europe, ushering in, you guessed it, the Iron Age. The Iron Age. The Iron Age. And on that note, that's going to be that, because we're hitting 21 minutes. 22 minutes is the goal, because that's the average running time for a television program. That is a 30-minute ad slot uh, for... Uh, the year, I'd say probably like um, 2006, 22 minute episodes, like How I Met Your Mother, like second season, 22 minutes, go to uh, Netflix and check it out, I bet that I'm right, 22 minutes, 14 seconds, guess, that's my guess. Um, Question, describe, uh, we didn't get to Israelites yet, Uh, did I just turn the page too far? I might have. Uh, how many capital cities did the Persian Empire have? Why do you think Persians set up so many capitals? We didn't talk about that at all, but I like the question. How about we just start with that next time? Tomorrow. Let's start with, why do you think the Persians set up so many capitals? This is Context is Everything Media Network. This is What's Under Your Hood. Uh, My name is John Michael Monroy. We're just going through a 2001 textbook because it's the only one that I had and also because it's an interesting uh, kind of a cultural artifact. What a textbook looked like immediately before uh, culture really started to shift between technology and uh, antagonism between different parts of the world, namely the Middle East. Uh, That started in September of 2001 when this book uh, actually hit the shelves. So before they hit the shelves, they were created. And immediately upon them hitting the shelves, three days, four days later, there was an attack, uh, September 11th. So this textbook is historical context for immediately before that, which is just a slight intrigue to me. Um, but it was the only textbook that I had, so that's a complete coincidence, and I'm just going to read through it with that in mind. And that's the first talking point that I can really think of for uh, why it interests me to read this book. Also, I was a history teacher. Going over my time here, that's it.